All right. Now, do you think you know enough math to solve this problem without using a calculator? Well, let's find out. So here is the question. We have 90 minus 100 in parentheses cubed divided by 100 minus 90 in parentheses squared. All right, so once again, no calculators, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct solution in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. So one more time, we have 90 minus 100 in parentheses to the third power divided by 100 minus 90, all this to the second power or squared. All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The uh, correct solution here is negative 10. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. You're like, I missed you too, math man. I knew this stuff way back in the good old days. You should have seen me. I used to get all A's in math. Well, of course, if you uh, have uh, been away from math for a long time, you're going to forget a lot of this stuff. So don't feel bad. Matter of fact, uh, let's go ahead and get into how to solve this right now. Okay, so in mathematics, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, powers, and the like, these are called mathematical operators, and these are mathematical operations, and we have to do problems in the correct order, okay, the correct uh, mathematical order. If not, if we take this order versus this order versus this order, in other words, we can do subtraction first, division first, you know, we can do all kinds of creative things here. We'll end up with different values. Only one is the correct way, okay? So in order to know whether you're uh, using the correct order of operations, you got to keep this lovely saying in mind, PEMDAS. Okay, this is, again, an acronym, P-E-M-D-A-S. I'll explain very quickly here what it means in a second. But there's a lovely little memory aid that goes along with this, and that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase. And by the way, this phrase has been around forever for decades and decades and decades. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So what does it stand for? Well, it's a checklist that goes from left to right, left to right. So P stands for parentheses. So if you see parentheses, which of course we have some in our problem, this is where we need to start, okay? But these uh, parentheses could also be grouping symbols like brackets or these little squiggly things like this. Uh, basically, uh, we're talking about grouping symbols. Now, I'm going to give you an abbreviated explanation of PEMDAS. There's more um, that you need to know and practice. So if you're interested in really you know, practicing ba basic mathematics more beyond this video, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. Plus, I have an excellent uh, little mini kind of basic math boot camp. It's called my Math Foundations course. You'll find a link to it in the description that can help you out big time with basic math. Okay, so E stands for exponents. Uh, basically, you can think of it as powers, okay? So when you have a power, here, let me just kind of write this real quick, like two to the third power, this is how we would say this, right? The two part of this power is called the base. This little three up here is called the exponent. So when you're dealing with a power, the little number in the top right is called the exponent. So this is what this means. So we're going to do parentheses first. Then if we have any powers, we're going to do those next. Of course, we're going to have some powers in this problem. Okay, so this M, D, A, and S, M stands for multiplication, D is division, A is addition, and S is subtraction. And this is where a lot of students get confused, uh, and understandably so, because you think if it's a checklist from left to right that you're going to do multiplication, always, 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 and then division next after all the multiplication, that's not the case. That's not the way this works, okay? This is an actu actually a group. So you're going to do whatever you see first from left to right. Okay, so if you see multiplication and then division, you're going to do it this way. But if you see division first from left to right, you're going to do it this way. Addition and subtraction work the same way. Okay, so now that you are an expert in the order of operations, we have to keep this in mind because we have various operations here, right? We have parentheses, we have powers, we have division, we have subtraction. So we have to always keep PEMDAS in mind. All right, so obviously uh, we're going to be thinking about wanting to do these parentheses first. And uh, you might be saying, all right, let me go ahead and work with these parentheses. But before we do this, okay, before we even start the order of operations per se, what I'm going to suggest to you is that let's write this problem in an entirely different way 
and a much better way to actually do this problem without a calculator, okay? So what I want you to notice here is that we have this whole thing here and it's being divided by this whole thing here. Anytime you have one thing being divided by another thing, this thing right here being divided by this thing, you can think of this as a fraction. Now, I know a lot of you are like, oh, fractions. Come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, don't give me fractions. Well, fractions are gonna make our uh, life a lot easier here, okay? So this is going to be the numerator and this will be the denominator. We're taking this and we're dividing it by this. So when you have a fraction, you could take, let's say I had this expression right here, this right here, this fraction uh, means 90, uh, parentheses 90 minus 100 cubed being divided by this, okay? Now there's a real um, advantage to uh, doing the problem this way. And of course, I'll show you that in just one second. But uh, first, let's go ahead and make sure you understand uh, how to simplify what's inside these parentheses now, okay? And of course, I'll show you why this is a much better way to approach this problem. All right, so here we have parentheses 90 minus 100 uh, parentheses cubed over 100 minus 90 parentheses squared. So as I indicated uh, that one of the uh, biggest reasons why students make mistakes in mathematics is they uh, mess up positive and negative number operations. Okay, real basic stuff. So 90 minus 100, we have to do what's inside parentheses now. And another kind of thing about the order of operations, when you have a fraction, you can kind of think of the numerator and the denominator as kind of independent little problems. In other words, uh, when you're doing an order of operation problems that involves a, a fraction like this, just focus on the numerator as its own separate problem, the denominator as its own separate problem. And when you're done doing uh, simplifying, uh, the respective uh, you know, numerators and the denominator here, then you could put those uh, values together to simplify the problem. Okay, so it just makes things a lot easier uh, when you're focusing here. So here, 90 minus 100, this right here, when we do this inside parentheses, this is negative 10, okay, negative 10, not 10. Okay, so if you put that down as 10, well, then you need to do some review with your positive and negative numbers. It's not that difficult to learn, but at least you know where you made an error. Okay, so this is gonna be parentheses negative 10 cubed, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and handle what's inside the parentheses down here. So we have 100 minus 90 uh, squared. Okay, so 100 minus 90, this is going to be 10 parentheses squared. Now, some of you might say, well, you know, should we just finish out this problem? Should I just take this negative 10 and cube it and then just kind of do this math? No, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna do uh, any multiplication too uh, quickly when you're dealing with a fraction situation. And I'll explain to you uh, why in a second. So this is the first step that we want to take. Okay, so what are we gonna do next? Well, what we're gonna do next is have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. This really helps me out. It really helps uh, grow my classroom, okay? I'm trying to reach people that are interested in mathematics, maybe wanna relearn math, maybe you, uh, you know, took math you know, well, of course, everyone should have taken math, but so I get so many people, and I really love to connect with these type of folks that remember taking math way back in the 70s, 80s, 60s, 50s, and they're like, boy, you know, and I always wondered if I could, you know, reach calculus, whatnot. I can tell you right now, 100% of, of you out there, and if I'm speaking to you directly, you absolutely could have become an engineer, anything you wanted to do, okay? Unfortunately, what happens is, is a lot of people get, uh, they create this kind of uh, math phobia, okay? They become anxious about math or they don't believe they're smart enough. I'm telling you right now, you're absolutely smart enough, but what you need is great instruction, a lot of encouragement, and of course, hard work. I'm trying to reach those type of folks, people that are interested in math and who need help in math. Uh, by you subscribing, it really does help me uh, grow my channel. By the way, make sure to hit that notification button. And if you are new to my channel, I have 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. I made that content for you. So back to the problem. Okay, so here um, we're at, we have negative 10 cubed over 10 squared. Now, we need to understand what negative 10 cubed means, right? Well, it means take negative 10 and multiply it by itself uh, three times, right? So this is how a power works. Negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10. Now, some of you might be inclined to want to, you know, do this actual product, you know, do the multiplication here, but do not do this. Just list out your factors. Okay, now we may do, need to do some multiplication, 
but you know don't make that determination to the very end of a problem so 10 squared is 10 times 10 so here is the situation now let's kind of observe something so we can kind of uh, get some confusion out of the way so here I have a negative number okay a negative number and it's being multiplied by another negative number and this is going to be another negative number right negative times negative times negative so a negative times a negative is what well hopefully you said positive okay a negative times a negative is positive and a positive times a negative is negative so what I want you to recognize is that the sign of this value over here is going to be negative now a lot of you can see that you're like oh 10 times 10 times 10 that's 100 times 10 thousand don't really think in those terms just yet what I want you to do is to concentrate on what the sign of the final answer is going to be so we have a negative in the numerator and then of course we have a positive because this is positive times a positive is a positive so a negative divided by a positive is what well that is negative so our final answer is going to be negative so that's going to help us because a lot of uh, you know you might get confused with all these negative signs but just know that hey we have the same factor negative divided by uh, positive is going to be negative so we just need to know hey our final answer will be negative okay so now we can just easily finish this problem up because we have all these lovely uh, factors common factors okay so the way it works, let me actually go ahead and just back up here so you can see. So when you have a fraction, okay, and you have the same factor, so this is a product, this times this times this, you know, this is one big multiplication. Um, well, let's just take 10 times 10. So 10 times 10 is 100. So these 10s here are factors of 100 because the product of 10 times 10 is 100. So I want to make sure you understand the correct math terminology here. Now, when you have like factors, you can cross cancel these things. Now, some of you might say, well, 10 and negative 10, uh, they're not like. Well, you know what? We can kind of uh, forget about the negatives right now because, you know, our final answer is going to be negative, right? So what, basically, this negative 10 right here, okay, you might say, well, I can't uh, cross, take this 10 and, and uh, you know, cross cancel with a negative 10 because they're different numbers. Well, here's what I want you to think. This 10 is the same thing as like negative 1 times a positive 10, all right? So we can even break down negative 10 into its lovely low factors. So, uh, you know, you just kind of, you know, with experience, you'll be able to see this easier, right? So negative 10 is the same thing as negative 1 times 10. So now we could cross cancel these 10s. So 10 will just go into this negative 10. That will take this out. Of course, that'll be a negative 1 remaining up there. And then I'm left with a negative 10. All right, so negative times negative is positive times a ne negative is negative 10 over. Uh, these tens are all gone. You're like, well, there's nothing left. Well, there's always a one as a factor. And down here, that'll be a positive one. So negative 10 over positive one gives us negative 10. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in basic math, Check out these two courses right here. So the first is my Math Foundations course. This is a, a quick review of basic math. Now, if you want to review uh, basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I'm going to leave uh, links to both of these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.